So yeah, coloring and shading. I, I turned my sketch off, and now I'm going to add a new layer uh, just for our color. Color, color. Make sure it is above my sketch layer, but below my ink layer. And show you the, the magic of the vector paint bucket tool. Uh, it works the same way as a paint bucket in a regular um, raster photo uh, program. Um, you, you click and it fills an area with color. Um, it's more complicated to program when you're in vector, but in terms of using it, then it's all the same thing. So. Um, when you first use a paint bucket, it won't capture everything that you want. I got these white edges on the side. Well, the way you have to fix that is by turning on uh, the grow shrink. It's the options up here. The options up here are the threshold, which is um, sort of the tolerance. A high threshold means it'll blanket everything. Um, the grow shrink is um, it will expand or contract the ultimate size of the shape that it's making. So I might need a bit more of the two. Let's expand it by three points. And, oops, I accidentally moved up to the ink. Let me lock the ink layer so that I don't do that. Yes, okay. Now we're good. Um, just a tiny bit down there that I didn't capture though, but I can easily move the notes. So what I should have shown this off earlier, but uh, when you use the vector paint bucket tool, it creates a new shape, just like any shape you could make on your own, uh, except it you know, slots in nicely and fills things with color. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, it, the, what the paint bucket ultimately draws is based on your zoom level. So when I zoom way out and use the paint bucket tool, I don't get very good results. But when I zoom in, it works a lot better. If you remember, my eyeballs are not actually transparent, and so if I tried to use the flood fill on them, it wouldn't work because they are a, their own thing on the ink layer. Sort of like I did with um, those little bits on the base, I'm going to use some some path magic to make my eyeballs do what they want. That sounded a little creepy, but... So a whole bunch of unions and difference, and I get the shape that I want. It's just a nice eyeball that is its own eyeball, and then behind it is transparent. I'll do the same thing with the other one. That's what that. uh, the alternative to using the the paint bucket tool is to uh, draw things yourself. But I like to do that if my if the thing that I'm trying to to paint in gets really complicated. These baggy eyes down here. So I just drop myself the same way I, I did everything else. Sometimes you'll get discontinuous things like this. I, you can once again just use Union to fix that. So I filled in everything with color that needs to be. Um, uh, maybe one thing I should do. You know, is the background, start thinking about that. Let's add a new, new layer just for my background, make it below the color layer. And um, this is where the document properties comes in handy because we are going to resize the page to the drawing or selection. Um, if you missed that, this is on the page tab, resize page to drawing or selection. So that just made it so that uh, you remember that the the rectangle for our artboard was sort of the wrong shape, and now I just made it perfectly fit with our background. So I'll make that. Well, I should. I, I guess I haven't thought of a color palette for this, and that's what I should pick now, huh? So what would be a good color for the background? Actually, this sort of um, desaturated purple is kind of cool. That might be a bit too dark, though. Yeah, 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 it's pretty cool. Um, okay, now we'll 
do the color for the Chimera Labs proper. So let's start with her fur. Should be orange. Maybe I'll go with maybe I'll go with a bolder color scheme this time. I I normally like um, color palettes that are more um, desaturated. But I'll go with one that's a little bit bolder. Like horn, but it's used to be grayer though. Oops. So yeah, uh, if you ever have problems trying to click something that's tiny, uh, zoom in, it'll help you grab it. I should decide on what color my line work is going to be, is where I was trying to go. So yeah, I'm going to change the color of my line work. I locked the color and the background. So now when I, I drag, I select the entire image essentially and it only grabs my line work because that's the only thing on the, the ink layer. So let's... Hmm. This is going to be tricky. I don't know, I'm pretty meticulous when it comes to color picking. Oh, that's actually a pretty cool color. Um, brownish red. See if I can finagle it into something cooler. I think I'll have to go through and fix the rest. I kind of like this color for the line work. I'll have to change the color of everything else. And you will notice that also since these things uh, were shapes and lines and not polygons I made myself, they became broken when I selected everything and made it red. So we can fix that. Just simply remove the fill and it's back to what we expected. these didn't get changed red like everything else, I'll have to do them the fun way. So once again, the eyedropper tool, um, use my swap fill and stroke and remove fill. You just need to know your way around. I will use the arrange tools after all. Um, okay, I should change my spank lines and my fumes and make them something interesting. Uh, what would be interesting? Uh, mix them up a bit though, so that's not quite so boring. so bad when it comes to the colors, but it's going to need shading. So I had everything unlocked just to tool around with it easier, but I'm going to lock everything up again and then add a new layer just for my shading. So it's in between the color and the ink layers, so now it will be very easy um, just to make things that are shading. Just draw my own polygons. in them and just be nice and shading -y. Shading with a color that is uh, the exact same thing as the normal color, except darker, that is boring. You should mix it up a bit. So in this case, 
This isn't the same orange as the fur, but darker. It's got a little bit of red in it. think of uh, what other projects you know, all of you in TV land have decided to try out. I sort of cannot know because I am not there with you. Um, I don't know, hopefully you... Um, well, I think there's two basic ways you could have tackled this. The first is um, if you're already, I'm going to redo this entire thing, um, if you're already making art, then it's usually easy enough just to <laughs> do the same thing except in vector. Um, otherwise, maybe you really wanted to try something new, and so you, you decide to like try your hand at some sort of logo design or something like that. And that's pretty fun. If you, I don't know, I always encourage people to expand their art horizons and try try making something that you've never made before. Even if you stink at it, um, it will sort of inform the rest of your work, make you a better person. Normally, when I do illustrations, I have some post-production, so to speak, in raster. So, like, I'll open it up in paint.net, and I'll add in, like, texture and stuff like that. I don't think I'll do that this time, partially because I don't want to confuse people. I just stick with pure vectors. And also because that's more time, and it's outside the purview, I guess you could say, of this, this little video series. This side actually doesn't need any shading, although the chimera itself will cast a shadow on it. And the way I'm doing the shading, I don't have to the, the part that you can actually see, I have to do, I have to trace very carefully, but um, I'm just making these paths that go underneath my line work. I guess I haven't shown that off very well. But, um, so those don't have to be perfect, I'm just tracing anything um, that will get covered up by the line work, and then it's good enough. This happens fairly frequently, where um, I decide to drop something or add something for my sketch. Uh, I strongly encourage um, getting your sketch as well developed as you possibly can before starting to vector over it. Um, I would constantly say to myself, oh, that'll be easy enough to add in um, during vectors so I won't go through the hassle of erasing my brilliant sketch. But that doesn't work. You make your sketch as perfect as possible because it's really, really hard to eyeball things and make them look good uh, working in vector. It's a whole lot easier when you have a pencil and an eraser in your hand. See? Eh, that's not so bad. Yeah. Except I need to shade them now, or at least I can. Eh, I'll shade the whole thing. OK, 
Okay, I think... Are we done? I sort of... I want to change my spank lines and my anger bubbles again. That's, they're on the ink layer. give them oh that's one thing I can add um, a drop shadow to everything drop shadow is simply the fancy term um, for a darker version of something that is a little bit to the left of the actual thing once again something that is very hard to describe in words but you know when you see it there you go drop shadow and then the Chimera Labs itself should have a drop shot as well. That should go on the background layer. Uh, wow, we're, we're, we're done. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess I can... I mean, I don't know why I need to constantly look for, for little bits and pieces to add on to. Hopefully you got the idea, um, or I mean, hopefully watching this uh, uh, sort of was always helpful and insightful in, in how a vector illustration is done, or at least can be done. Hopefully um, my little Inkscape feature tour was good enough, and you learned everything that you'll need to know or that you want to know. Let me see, I don't last minute check to see if there's any functionality I forgot. Well, I'll save my work first of all. You can play around with it on your own or, I mean, ask in the forum thread what have you uh, for advice or tips or whatnot. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is export this as a bitmap. I don't know, sure, we'll, we'll export it as a really high resolution. So uh, I should mention this better. Uh, export bitmap uh, is, it exports your vector art as a .ping file. So you can upload it to the internet or open it in a in another image editing thing. And here's paint.net for instance. Let me grab it. Okay, and there you go. Um, it went from vector, and now, as you can see, it exported as a raster. There's our good old friend of the pixels again. Of course, back in Inkscape, we do not have those at all. It's nice and vectory. But I mean, there you have it. Um, once again, hope you enjoyed this whole thing. Hope you learned something. Hope your own projects at home are going well. Um, I hope you tune in to the rest of the art camp series and watch them and uh, do them as well and have fun and improve as an artist and be an awesome person. Yeah. I guess that's it. I, I, I don't want to say goodbye, internet. I, I don't want to lose you. I, I love you, but it, it must be done. <laughs> <laughs>